Hi viewers, welcome back to the channel. Today uh, we are going to solve a problem from the topic of mechanical vibration. They are asking us to compute the natural frequency of this system for small disturbance from the equilibrium. So here we have a uniform thin disc. It is connected by two springs as shown over here. And they are asking us to compute the natural frequency of vibration of the system. If you read the problem very carefully, there is one assumption that is stated within the question. It is he here. We can assume that the disc is undergoing pure rolling. So the first question is what is pure rolling then? So I would like to explain you what is pure rolling with a simple example. Let's do a thought experiment wherein we have a small disc as shown over here. Let's say it is having a radius of capital R. I would like to call the center of the disc as capital C and I will denote the point where it comes into contact with the ground as capital A. Now, Let's say it is rolling towards right with an angular velocity of omega radians per second. So what kind of motion is this disc undergoing? It's combined translation and rotation because as it moves towards right, the CG of the disc is undergoing translation, but at the same time or simultaneously, the disc rotates about its own axis. So there is a combined translation and rotation that is happening while the disc moves from this point to this point. But how it is related to the problem that we have in our hand? This assumption pure rolling will bring in a few more constraints to this problem. Let's say I reach here after one complete rotation of the disc about its center. So that means point A has come to contact with the ground again. So if you draw somewhere in between, A would have been somewhere here. The point A would have been somewhere here. So it has re finally this point has reached or met the ground again after one complete rotation about its center. If this distance is equal to 2 pi r then our assumption of pure rolling holds true. Uh, given that this particular disk is undergoing pure rolling what will be the velocity of this point this particular point c in order to answer that question, let's uh, look into this a bit more carefully. So the point C moves a distance of 2 pi r. As this particular point A rotates about the center C and reaches here. Make sense? So if I want to compute the speed of the point C, it is distance divided by the time. Isn't it? The I would put a magnitude symbol over there because I am wor <clears throat> worried about the speed. The distance is 2 pi r. Now what is the time? The time is, see the time it takes is equal to the time it, it takes for the point A to make a complete rotation about point C. Now to make a complete rotation the time taken is 2 pi by omega, isn't it? Because one rotation is 2 pi radians and omega is having the units of radians per second. So this particular number will tell me what is the amount of taken, amount of time taken by this point A to rotate on its own axis. If we do all the math, velocity of the point C turns out to be r omega simple uh, here i forgot to write one thing very small thing but uh, 
this is time we are talking about we are evaluating time like this so now we have an equation which tells us the speed of this point c now if i ask you what is the speed at this point let's call that point d i will post my video for a while so that you can think about let's say this is the velocity vector at that point and let's say this is the velocity vector at this point so the velocity of of this particular point is because of two things one is there is a translation and then there is rotation so what turns out to be is that if you compute there are ways in which you can compute you can use the relative velocity formula um, to evaluate exactly the velocity at this point d but combining both the effects the velocity at this point is to omega r this point the velocity is omega r make sense so this disk was undergoing complete uh, i mean combined translation and rotation motion so we arrived at expressions for speeds corresponding to two points speed of this point is known and speed of this point is known now my question is can i convert this problem to a pure rotation problem then you may ask what is the advantage that i get when i convert a a uh, general motion problem into a pure rotation problem the governing equations are far more easy to deal with that's one of the first and foremost reasons why we need to cut ex excuse me why we need to convert a general motion problem to a pure rotation problem to do that we invoke the concept of instantaneous center so instantaneous center is the point about which the whole rigid body is undergoing pure rotation at that instant of time so assume that this is instantaneous center for this object i'm just assuming if this is the instantaneous center for this object then velocity of of this point will be this distance will be this distance times the angular velocity of the object makes sense because previously we have seen that velocity or speed of this point is omega times r makes sense now what about this point if this is the instantaneous center for the body then velocity of this body is this distance times the angular velocity which is again omega 2 omega r makes sense so the assumption holds true and it lies on the line which is perpendicular to the two well velocity vectors so in a nutshell what i wanted to convey is that when you have a disk undergoing combined motion both translation and rotation instantaneous center is this point which is in contact with the ground make sense so we can apply newton's law corresponding to rotation motion about this point because the whole body is undergoing pure rotation as if the body is pivoted at this point uh, now things are easy because uh, now we know that if this body when it is slightly disturbed from equilibrium what kind of motion it will undergo it will undergo general motion wherein there is rotation as well as translation but just now we figured out that when you have a body especially a disk which is undergoing pure rolling we the instantaneous center for the system is this point and we can assume that the whole body is undergoing pure rotation about that point now in order to evaluate the natural frequency the next thing is write the governing equation of motion get an expression and then evaluate the natural frequency so let's go ahead and do them step by step but before doing that we need to evaluate the mass moment of inertia about this point let me call that point little o or capital o so this is the free body diagram how it will look like 
I haven't shown the forces in the y direction because that doesn't matter because my body is not going to vibrate in the y direction it is going to move in this direction let's say this is x and this is y so I have, I have sh and one more reason it won't cause this normal forces won't cause any moment if I sum up the moments about the about this point that's one another reason why I didn't worry too much about the forces that act along the y direction makes sense so now let's go ahead and uh, first find the mass moment of inertia so mass moment of inertia can be evaluated once we invoke the parallaxis theorem which is pretty simple you find the mass moment of inertia about the cg then add mass times the distance between the cg and the point of interest squared okay then uh, what, this is simple now let's take the summation of moments about the point o once we do that it's not a big deal to write this equation so i won't get into the details once you turn the mathematical crank you reach here where you get the governing equation uh, that governs the motion once you have this equation evaluating natural frequency is a cakewalk you take the square root of the ratio of this term to this term r square r square gets cancelled and here you are your natural frequency is a function of k by m makes sense because of single degree of freedom system we know the natural frequency formula is omega n equal to root k by m so dimension wise this equation holds true these are the few small checks that you can do while you are solving a problem uh, in order to ensure that you are on the right track in now uh, evaluating the answer uh, we know that values for k1 k2 and capital m once we plug in those numbers in this formula we we go uh, we will get the natural frequency so the natural frequency turns out to be something like 23.9 radians per second a very important thing once you start solving problems in vibration uh, you need to pay extra attention to the units or the dimensions because more often once you start working in industry people start talking about hertz so one whenever you do a simulation whenever you do a hand calculation make the appropriate conversion so that everyone is on the same page and in case if your omega n is in radians per second in order to convert it to hertz just divide it by 2 pi so if i want to convert this value to hertz just divide it by 2 pi that gives you uh, the frequency in hertz uh, thanks for watching i think so the key takeaway from this video is one the concept of instantaneous center when you have a disc which is undergoing pure rolling and the concept of pure rolling itself in the first place and then how to solve for natural frequencies when you have everything in place all these concepts in place thanks for watching